Have you spoken to Andrew since all this came out? No. When stuff like this happens, I usually have a rule of thumb not to talk to the individuals. I mean, I guess that could change, but usually I try, especially if I'm not like, especially if it's not something that happened like in my vicinity, in my circle or anything like that. Obviously, I will uh, try to not talk to the perpetrator specifically because I want to be completely unbiased in my assessment of the situation. So no, I did not. I, I think it's uh, it would be inappropriate of me to like, it would be inappropriate of me to basically get uh, uh, like a one-sided assessment of the situation. I would rather have uh, have people who are, uh, who are being accused of actions, you know, openly state their piece for everyone to see. Ethan was talking about uh, this uh, situation as well, but the first accusation is like, is, is definitely, it's definitely uh, not good. You know what I mean? It's like pestering, you're pushing, you're pushing, 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 and then ultimately get consent. Which still, uh, you know, without without the other person's uh, without the other person's accounts, it looks like it was pestering, and and uh, and and coercive. Okay, and in a lot of instances, people do that because they have either past trauma, or they do that because they are fearful of what the other party might do. You know what I mean? That's like there are very valid reasons as to why women eventually offer consent. Okay. Now, especially when you pair that up with like physical actions, you all of a sudden get into a, a territory of, you know, you're, you're behaving in a, in a really way. Okay. Now, a lot of women have experienced, uh, a lot of women have experienced things like this, right? If you have any girlfriends, a lot of women have been through similar situations where like they might not even in that moment think that it was like weird or wrong because they're so used to it. Right. And then later on, they're like, oh, this is actually, uh, this was actually like weird. No, no wonder I feel weird about the situation. So that much I understand. And I think that like, I think that that, that kind of like that instance deserves more information. That instance, instances like that uh, require more information. But once you establish a pattern of repetitive behavior, as I've said so many times, like I, I don't have a checklist, but. I do look for certain things whenever there's assault or impropriety, like any kind of uh, any kind of like me too, post me too era accusation. There are a couple things I look at, okay? And one of them is a pattern of repetitive behavior, like repeat offenses. That's why I always tell you like, when this kind of stuff happens, I always tell you like, look, there were more people will come out usually. The second girl had like no motive to lie. She has no social platform, can only lose, uh, which backs up her claims in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, even if you have a social platform, it doesn't matter. You usually have a lot to lose, regardless. Let's hear what Ethan had to say. And, you know, it's for the men to to protect themselves and to protect the women. I'm saying you got to meet someone, get to know them a little bit, make sure that you're both sober and that you've got enthusiastic. Cons I mean, this take like almost attacks the concept of like casual sex or like hookups and shit like that. And in fact, that can be done in a very fun way. I I'm not anti uh, casual sex. I'm not anti like hookup culture or anything like that. Um, if you're famous, though, no, even if you're famous, like it doesn't matter. Sent. Because it's just not worth it. I don't think a lot of these guys doing this necessarily want to be hurting people, right? I think they get caught up in the moment. I think they probably have a lot of regrets about how they acted. I, I don't know, though. I, I, maybe I'm assuming too much. I don't know, right? I don't know how these people feel or what they think about. But I do know that there's a lot of victims of women. Who Am I crazy? Does Ethan kind of sound reactionary here? Like the conservatives who are like, what are the rules? Man, that's not a conservative take. Why are we like giving conservatives uh, any kind of grounds to make it seem like they have reasonable assessments here? Not understanding, not understanding consent is one thing, okay? But like literally you're talking about a conversation, like interpersonal communications between a man and a woman that uh, are, are strangers to one another. That is an insanely complex situation, okay? Of course, the, the, there are so many different dynamics. Like, no, Ethan is not being reactionary when he says, what are the rules? Or conservatives aren't even being reactionary when they say, what are the rules? There are obviously instances where, like, it's pretty obvious. When someone says no, that means no, okay? 
That is a rule. That's like a pretty basic rule. Who are in the wake of these famous men being traumatized, being abused, having lots of regret, being coerced. So what do we do about it? I mean, if you're a famous man coming up, you can't do it. I mean, it's just too, it's just it's too risky. I think the dynamic of you being famous and powerful and then being a fan and knowing who you are, it's too powerful of a combination. So like you can't exploit that. It's just it sucks, right? It sucks because you can't go out there and be a rascal and everyone. You know what I mean? But uh, which is like apparently the dream of men. That's why they become famous. I didn't know that. I mean, I know that there's like dudes out there, but it's, I find that odd that like you become famous just for that. that. It's just like, okay, bro, that that's really it. That's all there is to life. I think that's just <sighs> young yeah, men. You're not getting away with it. Take them out to dinner. I think one of the things that happens so frequently for a lot of dudes is that like they're weird nerds. Okay. Me too was created as a movement because the actual like institutions of power were built by men oftentimes to basically violate whatever boundaries they uh, other people would want to have so because these institutions including courts including the police force were not doing enough to like combat sex uh sex crimes people took it to their own hands okay into the public square and what happens when people take matters into their own hands there's a pendulum swing and sometimes that pendulum swings to the f insane uh you know, completely opposite end of that spectrum. And it happens every time. There are always, if you look at it now, uh, it, it's not like a rule or anything, okay? But usually what happens is like someone very reasonable and very valid uh, is, is getting called out, okay? And, you know, they'll, they'll even get criminal punishments like in the case of Harvey Weinstein. Then a bunch of others come out, okay? And a lot of those are also valid. Most of them are, almost all of them are valid. And then we get to the points where it's like it moves into like the the area of people being like, oh, we went on a date and like, um, you know, we kissed, we made out. Uh, and and uh, at the time I thought it was fine, but like now I don't feel like it's OK. You can say it's a bad take all you want, but with Aziz Ansari, that's basically what happened. And that was in my mind when that first happened. In my mind, it was felt like it was a uh, it felt like it was a it was a culture shift where it was like. This is the new rule. These are the new boundaries. And I think that's a valid thing to ask for, okay? Demanding or expecting enthusiastic consent is understandable, okay? Get to know them a little bit. And then when you got guys who travel around, right? Who uh, go city to city. I don't know, man. F*** off. I don't know. Uh, you know, just beat off, bro. Get some p hotel porn. Yeah, I don't think this is just about being horny. That's the difference. I think that it's like, I think men are taught from an early age to just like, you know, be aggressive, be aggressive, go after what you want, you know, shoot or shoot, that sort of thing. And like, there is validity to that statement, but uh, I think like people don't know how to control themselves. People don't know how to conduct themselves in this situation, uh, especially paired up with like culture, especially, which used to be way worse in my opinion, um, especially paired up with like a sense of entitlement that people have. I mean, there's so many different flavors of what I'm basically talking about all the way to like brutal or what Harvey Weinstein did, for example, even though his dick was literally mangled as a consequence of g having gangrene on his like it, that was a power thing. That was control it can sometimes be about just straight up control. It's not just like letting out your sexual desires. You know what I mean? I think for, but when we when we think about like uh, when we think about other situations, other instances like uh, some of the uh, Andrew Callahan accusers and what he did in in the way he conducted himself in some of those uh, interactions, in and of itself is not necessarily about power, but more so about constantly and consistently being reinforced uh, by by never uh, facing a, a level of accountability, I think, and thinking that that is like the modus operandi, the normal way to, to operate, the normal way to behave. Maybe he realizes it's bad, but he still does it. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because what matters is the trauma that you're inflicting on people. I know it's expensive, but you're rich. Hell, even get a prostitute, well... I think that's fine, right? I mean, at least you know what's going on there if you hire a prostitute. I don't know what the solution is, but what's happening right now is not working. It is not working. So I don't know if this was a crazy tweet, 
Is this a crazy thought or a sane thought? What do you guys think? Because I'm getting sick of seeing this happening. I'm getting sick of seeing people that I did respect. Sex is also framed as a game in which men have to convince women to them. So no means uh, no. It means try harder in their minds, which is incredibly. Yeah, another part of this reality, another part of this dynamic also revolves around the fact that like um, women are are basically sheltered and, and pushed aside. And while uh, objectification happens, it's never on women's terms. Like uh, women are objectified. They're seen as objects of desire. But but people don't even think about or consider that they want to too. Women are horny. OK, but unfortunately, from early on, women, for the most part, are taught that they are not supposed to be horny, that they're not supposed to control. They're supposed to just, uh, you know, behave uh, a, a, a certain way. And that paired along with like all the shit experiences that they have early on and this is something that you hear all the time constantly uh having to endure that in a society also pushes you uh obviously will leave you having your guard up all the goddamn time uh one thing that i've always described to people is like for for men specifically who uh and i grew up at a time when like uh i grew up in a time in a culture where like the consent conversation was at the forefront even in the even before the me too era where people were like oh you should always ask for consent and people considered that to be weird okay people were like what the like i'm just gonna ask for consent and one thing that truly helped me understand it okay especially after i became really active was that if i'm on a date with a girl okay and we go back home and the girl says can i suck please is that really going to turn me off no of course not of course it's not going to turn you off that's insane. That is something that people cannot, could not comprehend at the time, like when they were asking for enthusiastic consent, because there is a fear of rejection. Okay, but like if the moment is right and, and you ask openly for consent, they are not going to get turned off by it. That was like a legitimate fear that a lot of men had. Okay, it's fear that I even had, but but that was also because I was really active. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I didn't understand it. Put yourself in the shoes of the 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 uh, other person. You go back home and you ask for consent. Uh you go back home and they ask for consent. They're going to you're going to be very excited at the prospect, okay? Somebody's got to figure this shit out. But it's not shit has changed. It's different now. You can't go out there and just everybody. I think men need to realize like what a powerful thing sex can be like you have to respect the power and the emotional connection that uh, happens there and how violated somebody can feel who like offered you up their body in that sense only to be kind of like discarded or used or to regret it, 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 it there needs to be some understanding of that and i'm not being a prude right like I'm cool with casual sex. I'm not like a puritanical. I don't think people need to get married or anything. I mean, on the first day, I don't care. I'm just saying there's a specific issue with famous men because there's a magnetic pull that you need to be accountable for and that you need to treat with a special care. Yeah, so wait, in a way, a maybe way this isn't start, a good analogy, but like sure. if you're a trained martial artist, world champion, you know what I mean? Like three time black belt, you know how to kill a man with one punch. If you get into a bar fight, you cannot unleash your full fury because if you go like and go for like a neck throat punch and they end up dying, guess what? You're going to jail. Whereas if it was someone who was untrained, you could, you know, go crazy. You're not going to kill the guy, right? You can, you can fight with all your passion. You don't have to worry about holding back. But if you have the potential to kill someone, you know how to do it. And you can do it easily. He said it. These rules only apply to rich, famous people. These regular viewers do not need to ask for consent verbally. And it can be agreed upon. Bro, that's crazy. Like, I'm not even saying that, like, obviously you have to ask for consent every single step of the way. Like a checklist, okay? Like I, certain things you can comprehend, okay? But if you can't, you definitely should ask. You don't do it, right? And that's common knowledge of people who are highly trained martial artists. They know that. And in a way, again, I don't know if this is a stupid analogy, but it's kind of the same thing, right? If you're famous and powerful and you go out. I think some chatters just don't comprehend and process what you say and they just watch with hate. Yes, a lot of people have preconceived notions of what I'm saying because they've already p 
put me in this like narrowly defined box. I am a woke lord. I am a soy facing SJW or whatever the. F so they're not arguing against me or the positions that I'm presenting to them. They're arguing against positions that they think I have. Okay. And this also happens with leftists that watch me as well. You have this edge. You have this magneticism. You know, people are, are going to be more uh, pulled to you, especially fans of yours. And so in the same way, you've got to be careful with what you've got there. Does that make sense? What do y'all think? Is it crazy? I don't know. I, I, you know what I mean? What I do know is this is one shot, one take. I'm going to upload it to my channel. And if y'all got a problem with it. No one is, no one is like uh, saying that you can't infer consent okay or body language is like meaningless in this conversation of course it's meaningful okay it's done the video is done oh let's go clout let's go free clout baby